Good evening. Welcome to another exciting edition of Sewing the Bourbon. Charlie, tell them what we're doing tonight. Tonight we have a very unique offering from Starlight Distillery at Starlight, Indiana. Mizunara finished mm. bourbon. Can't wait to try this one. Let's go. All right, Charlie. <laughs> I can't do this. Starlight, Mizanara finished. That's right. I know nothing about this other than it's from our friends up at Starlight. Just That's up right. The road here. That's right. Um, another finished product. It is, and Mizunara is Japanese oak. Japanese oak. Japanese oak. And if you know anything about Mizunara, which most people don't, I don't. Which I didn't until this episode is Mizunara oak trees have to be 200 years old or older to harvest. It's kind of like French oak. Kind of like French oak. However, Japan is a small country and very echo diverse. So there's only certain places where Mizunara grows. It grows crooked, which does not lend itself well to making staves. Don't laugh. And it is also a very wet oak. It literally translates to water oak. So there is a lot more processing and drying before it even becomes an oak stave. Interesting. Very interesting. The, the wood is in such demand that in 2023, some Mizunara casks can sell for upwards of $6,000. Just empty casks? Just for the barrel. Wow. Okay, so these casks. Yes. Were, what were they used for before finishing this? Don't know. You don't know? Have no idea. No idea. Pick this up. Uh, Starlight did a special release. These were a distillery only release. Um, I would love to have more information for you, but I don't. If we get it, we will give it to you. But it's not going to prevent us from enjoying this and seeing. So what he's saying is he didn't do the research. Oh no, I've done the research. <laughs> and I haven't heard anything back. Okay. So way to throw them under the bus. <laughs> but that's not going to stop us. So Mizunara has been around, obviously, for a long time. Japanese whiskeys are finished in it, uh, are, are aged in it, obviously. And it, over the last couple of years, more than a couple of years, you've seen scotches do it, and now bourbons have done it. Most recently and most famously, Angel's Envy a couple of years ago did their Mizunara cask release, an extremely limited release in a decanter. It's a whole big thing. And those are... How was that? Did you try it? Uh, I did drink some of that. I, like I thought that was pretty... Um, it is definitely outside of the character of Angel's Envy that you would anticipate. Okay. So, Well, let's get into this. This is seven year age stated, 116 proof. This is the Carl T. Huber's bourbon finished and Mizunara whiskey. So let's talk about that seven year. We're starting to see some older we stuff are come out from definitely Starlight. definitely start. And this is the great thing about being a bourbon fan now. And we talk about small craft distilleries, your home distilleries, people that are near you. Stick with them, man, because bourbon gets better with time. There's no cheating time. And seven years, you're starting to get up to pretty rare air there. Yes. So let's anxious to see. It's got a really interesting color to it. It really does. It's not super dark, but it's it's almost a little hazy looking. Is it? Does it look hazy to you? Not hazy as in. Say hazy. It it does have a unique color. I will tell you that. Yeah, I don't know how it, to describe. It, it. Yeah, like like light copper, like a faded like a dull, penny. almost like a <laughs> dull copper. Yeah. It's not super viscous. Uh, puts a little ring around the top, but doesn't have a ton ton of clean. Mm -mm. A little ethanol on the just, nose. Just a little bit. A little tingle going up the nostril there. Yeah, and but what comes with that tingle is like a there is there is flavor with that tingle. There is smell and aroma with it. Charlie, I'm I'm struggling. It, it I'm is, struggling tonight. It with is my, it with is my a little muted. Here, so I'm gonna, you mowed grass before we did this, which is always a good decision. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you to the. It it there is not a ton that hits you. It, there is a really. There is some oak 
smell there, but it it almost it almost smells like just oak chips. Like it's a, it's a weird kind of muted. Let's drink it. Let's and Come back drink. to the to the nose because it's that's weird. That's interesting. Are you getting a little bit of coffee? Almost like a coffee bean note on there. I was going to say coconut. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it is... Now I'm starting to get that coffee. It's a weird pour. It is. Because it's it's very the flavor kind of sneaks up on you. Like it's very light when when you It's a mixture of like a delicate yeah. palate, but then it's got it's got some fire on right. it. Right. A little fire. It, on it's it. a it's a weird mm -hmm. thing. And I I think all the flavor is on mid palate and yes. finish. Like there's nothing up front. You're like, oh. Where is everything? And then it's like, surprise. I'm getting mocha. That's what, It's chocolate and coffee is what I'm getting. All right. I'll agree with you now on that. And just enough. That there's some heat on it, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I... <laughs> I, I really don't know what to kind of make of that. Um, there is an intensity. <laughs> well, and it's 115 proof. 16. So, or 116 yeah. proof. And so seven years old. Um, I feel it in my whole mouth. Mm -hmm. Like it's in my gums. It's on like the inside of my mouth. Um, it's a weird thing though, because for me, there is none of that, like the front palate, like your mm -hmm. initial taste. There's really nothing. Like it just no, kind of all, like you said, mid and, and finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the finish is so long. It's, it's still, <laughs> still feeling it there. It, yeah. it just, and it's like this great flavorful tingle. Um, but it, like you said, the flavor is so kind of nuanced there. It's a really interesting. It really is. And, and we've talked about this before, but do we even know what the mash bill is for Starlight? For Carl T's? Their Carl T bourbon? I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I don't know. I would we'll, love to know that. We'll, we'll do some research, and if we figure out what it is, we'll put it in the thing. But what they really focus on it are the finishes, are the barrels, right? It, in in my opinion, best in the business. Like the the finished whiskeys, the finished bourbons, the finished ryes that come out of Starlight are some of the most unique and flavorful and challenging. Yeah, it, it, it's just <laughs> and, and there's two schools of thought to this. So if you're watching this and you're like, I don't drink finished whiskey, shame on you. But there's two schools of thought. There's you finish a bourbon or a whiskey because it's not ready the way it is, or you finish something because you say, I think I can make this taste crazy by mm -hmm. introducing it to this barrel. And Starlight definitely does the latter. Yeah, I think a good finished product is something that's, you're, you're just, as the word implies, you're finishing it off. Right. You're completing it. Yep. You're rounding it off, filing and, the edges. And I love what you just said about challenged. Um, I like things, I love things that make me like, whoa, what was that? Right. Like that's not <laughs> Just supposed, like tonight. That's not supposed to taste yeah. that way. That's not supposed to smell that way. That's not supposed to look like that. That doesn't even look like bourbon. And that's where I think Starlight just goes above and beyond. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder. I got quite a few. And several recent episodes, how have we described a lot of the whiskeys and bourbons we've tried. Oh, that's the classic, classic bourbon, bourbon profile, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Which, that's not a bad thing. That's, not at that's all. That's a good thing, but 
what you're usually not going to say about anything Starlight does is, oh, that's the classic yeah. bourbon profile. Tastes yeah. like bourbon. Yeah. yeah. It, you're going to, even if you struggle to figure out exactly what it is <laughs> that you're tasting, you, you're going to taste something different yeah. each they, and every time. There is for sure an oaky mm. complexity to this that just sits... Um, I'm getting a lot of smoke on this now. Uh, on the nose? It was funny. I was going to tell you to re-nose it. Yeah. Uh, very unique. And I, and I wish I had the details. And, and the next time I, I'm up there, I'll ask Christian... Like, wh where did this cast come from? And this is what's great. And we always do this. We start, you know, jabbering about the best part about going to a local distillery, a craft distillery is they're excited you're there. They want to talk to you. They want to share their product with you. They want you to be excited. They want you to love it. And you will get an experience at your local distillery, your craft distillery that you just cannot get from Buffalo Trace and Heaven Hill and Wild Turkey. And that's not to say that those places aren't amazing. It's just a different experience. Those places, the big boys are, are like, a, like an amusement park, right? Like pay your ticket, go through the turnstiles, stay on the path. That's and not to say you may have your, you may not have your occasional you know, you may yeah. run into Book or No, or you may see Jimmy Russell or you might. Russell. And, and they're, they're there often, but at a craft distillery, they're there all the time because yeah. they have to be. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're running the show. <laughs> they're, they're hauling. That's right. They're hauling cases of bourbon into 100%. the shop. Or 100%. You know, so, doing tours. Yeah, so if you are in the Louisville, Kentucky area and you are ever doing the bourbon trail, which we highly recommend you do, Take that quick 30-minute jaunt across the river, drive past our houses, and head up the hill to Starlight. You will not regret it. 100%. Couldn't agree more. And this is normally where I would ask you to tell them what we would love for them to do, but I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to ask you to please like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us. What about and me? we love you for it. Thank you. So that I have to tell them about the socials. You got to do the socials. So you got to follow us on our socials. Facebook at So Into Bourbon. Instagram at So Into Bourbon. And follow Glenn on TikTok at Whiskey Realtor. And most of all, keep your wallets loose and your, and your bong, bong holes tight. tight. Good night, everybody. Peace out. Do you want to wear the chain? I do. That's it. I don't know if it'll fit around my ear. How's this? It's actually awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Take it off. No, I'm wearing it. All right, do whatever you need to. <laughs> oh, oh God, it's all over me. <laughs> yes. Don't you love it? <laughs> all right. Take a little maple syrup, rub it behind me. It is an aura. Good evening. Welcome to another exciting edition. <laughs> you could have kept going. <laughs> we were, I used to have a samurai sword. I don't know where it is. I still right. have one. It's in my pants. <laughs> that would not be a samurai sword. That would be a katana, the little one. I will also dry it because I am a kind and courteous lover. We're not recording, are we? Yep. Sure are. Awesome. That's going to be a YouTube short. Oh, three, two, one, action.